Welcome to Forest Pack 9.3. This release features a couple of our most requested new features for Forest Ivy and Forest Pack Scatter. Starting with Forest Ivy, we're pleased to announce that branches now have tapered thickness. In the branches rollout, you'll find a new minimum and maximum width values to set a range. You can then control tapering along the length with a scale range parameter. As you can see, this makes plants look far more natural, especially as it spreads across walls or trees. Forest Pack also now includes a wind animation system found in the growth rollout. To get started, enable the animation checkbox. You'll then see a strength parameter that controls how much the wind affects the plant globally and a loop parameter that sets the speed. This is measured in frames. With a default of 300, it produces pretty decent results out of the box, but you can customize it. Lower values create faster animation and higher values slow it down. For even finer control, you can adjust wind separately for branches and leaves. In the branches rollout, use the strength slider to set how much movement applies to the branches. Here's how it looks with only the branches animated. Now if you scroll down to the leaf settings, you'll find the same control for each leaf layer, which can be adjusted independently. Here's how it looks with just the leaves. And here's how it looks with both leaves and branches animated together. Another question we often heard was how to extend a baseline after it had been drawn, since there were no traditional spline editing tools as such. Well, in Forest Pack 9.3, you can now extend baselines directly. Simply enable Paint, click near the end of an existing baseline, and it will continue from that point. This makes it much easier to keep growing ivy, perhaps in response to client feedback, without needing to delete and restart a new path. Finally, a new branch rotation parameter found in the growth rollout lets you rotate branches around the main stem, giving ivy a more art directable and organic spread. If we switch our attention to scattering, we can see some big improvements to distribution images, which are now much more versatile. Traditionally, Forest Pack has used black and white distribution images to control planting patterns. For example, in this scene with the vines in the background, a white pixel indicates a vine, while a black pixel creates a gap. By designing maps with the vertical white pixels and dots in between, we could achieve very precise and repeatable planting patterns. But many users asked for a more intuitive approach, using grayscale to control density. In this mode, white pixels would represent maximum density and black pixels minimum density, and the shades of grey in between would smoothly adjust the amount of scattering. Well, with Forest Pack 9.3, that's now possible. To use it, simply drop your texture into the map input. By default, you'll still see hard edges, since the old system relies on a threshold parameter that decides where grayscale is treated as black or white. But if you enable Use as Density Map, the results change immediately. White areas now produce dense scatters, and darker areas are lighter planting. And everything in between is smoothly interpolated. This provides a much more intuitive way to control scatter density across your scene. Talking of adding more intuitive controls, Forest Pack 9.3 introduces the ability to randomize scale by area. Until now, you've controlled scale variations using the settings in the Transforms rollout, and that's still available, but we've added an extra layer of flexibility in the Areas rollout, just below the Surface Material ID options. Here you'll find a new scale minimum and maximum control that allows you to apply an additional random scale range to each individual area within a single forest pack object. In many cases, this means you can keep everything in one forest pack object instead of the splitting the scene across several. Finally, working with paint areas is now much faster. Previously, if you were painting an include area and you wanted to switch to erase, you had to stop, go over to the panel and manually change the mode. Now you can do it instantly. If you're in paint mode, just hold Alt to erase, and if you're in erase mode, hold Control to paint. It's that simple. There's no need to switch tools, just work directly in the viewport. Forest Pack 9.3 is available now, and users with an active maintenance plan can download it directly from their user panel. Plan expired? That's no problem. You can rejoin at any time without penalty and get instant access to the latest version. <laughs>